Number 51. Determine the mass in grams of each of the following, and then I have A through C, so I'm just going to write A, B, and C. Okay, and you know what? I'll just give me some room. Okay, and pull this over here. All right, so anyway, in each one of them, it looks like we are starting off with moles, right? And we have to go to grams. So what's the conversion between moles of something, right, moles of something to grams of something? Can we get there in one single shot? The answer is yes. You could always go to grams of something, so I'll label that as X, by you can always go from moles of something to grams of something, and they have to be the same thing, in one single step. Because you know the conversion, one mole of anything always equals the molar mass, mm, in grams of that same anything, whether it's an element or a compound. I can't stress this enough that this conversion is like one of the biggest things that you guys have to memorize for this whole entire course. So it's good that we're getting in a lot of practice. So for A, let's just start it off. They're giving us 0.6 moles of oxygen atoms. Now that's the, that's the trick here. What do they mean by oxygen atom? An atom is just a single element or a single box on the periodic table. So this would just be O. Now, if I draw my uh, box for what oxygen looks like on the periodic table, because all these, it's just oxygen, right? Oxygen, oxygen, and oxygen. If you find oxygen on the periodic table, You'll come across two numbers, right? You'll come across an 8 and a 16.00, could be a 15.99, doesn't matter. Just know that the higher number is the mass number. That's the one that's used for the molar mass. So we won't be using 8, we'll be using the 16. Okay, so let's start it off. 0 0.600 moles of just O, because it's oxygen atoms, we're converting, so times by the ratio, moles of O go on the bottom, grams of O goes up on the top, and now we just got to figure out, well, what are these two numbers, right? What's the number for the top and what's the number for the bottom? Well, according to this conversion, one mole is equal to the molar mass in grams of, of that element or compound. So one mole, the one always goes with the word mole. And this number you have to find on the periodic table. Now, since it's only just one oxygen, we only take just one of these on the periodic table. This is what you would see on the periodic table, PT. So this would just be 16.00. Cross off moles of oxygen, and you get your answer. So 0.6 times 16, you get... 9.6. Now this, we still need three sig figs, because there's threes here. If you guys are uncertain of your sig figs, go back to chapter one. There's tons of problems there. So this would be 9.60 grams of O atoms, or just O. So box that answer off. That's the answer to A. So we're going to do the same thing for B and C. So for B, 0 0.600 moles of oxygen molecules, which is O2, times by that ratio, moles of O2 on the bottom, grams of O2 on the top. What are the numbers that go here? Well, according to that handy dandy information, one mole of anything is the molar mass on the periodic table. So now since you have two oxygens, it technically would be 2 times 16. So 2 times 16 is 32. So this would be 32.00. Cross off these units, they cancel, and you get your answer. 0. 0.6 times 32 is 19.2 grams of O2. And we still need three sig figs, so that's why this is the answer here. B is done. Now we just got to do C. Same thing, but just 0 0.600 moles of ozone molecule, which is O3. But times by that ratio, mole of O3 on the bottom, gram of O3 up top. What's the information between moles and grams? Oh, well, one mole of anything is 
the molar mass on the periodic table. Since there is three oxygens here, and each oxygen is 16 for its mass number, this would technically be 3 times 16. So 3 times 16 is 48. 48 cancel off moles of ozone. And 0.6 times 48, you still need three sig figs. So it's 28.8 grams of O3. Box that answer off. That's your final answer. Those are your answers for A, B, and C. Awesome job, guys. This was fun, quick and easy, but more practice, the better. If you guys can do all these practice problems, I mean, you are set for your exams, all right? So like this video if it was helpful for you. Tell us in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to be the first to know when we drop our next set of questions, hit that subscribe button, and it helps us out because it gets the word out to students just like yourself who are trying to better themselves and to get chemistry. So thank you for that. See you guys all in number 52. Bye-bye.